Back in 1982, the Polarstern uses air and water to protect its hull from the onslaught of the frozen sea. But to build the Arctic's biggest ice-breaking tanker, engineers must solve one final problem. They must find a way for ships to navigate a safe route through the ice to reach their destination. Timofey Gushenko is now four days into its voyage. It's closing in on Varanday oil terminal, where over 80 million liters of crude oil are waiting for it. But the ice is getting more challenging by the minute. Ice uh, condition change uh, any time, any day, because uh, when we start two days ago, it was uh, normal. But today is very dangerous. The crew is on constant alert in their battle with nature. Lookouts scan the ice to navigate the best course through. Years of experience have taught the captain how to read the ice. He knows that there are many different types, some much more deadly than others. Ice comes in many different forms. This it's my sample of freshly frozen ice. You can see, it's pretty milky looking with faults and cracks. Whereas multi-year ice that's been through many cycles of freezing and thawing is considerably purer. It's absolutely crystal clear. This here is my ice cannon. Now I'm gonna use it to fire these samples at some sheets of steel. First, the freshly frozen ice. Slip it in the barrel here. Cannon's pressurized. Three, two, one. <laughs> There's no denying that that's a, uh, a mighty impact, but it looks like this little panel has survived. What I want to do now, though, is put a new steel sheet on here and see how it handles an impact with multi-year ice. So we've got a new sheet of steel in there, some old multi-year ice in here. Let's see if we can spot any difference. Three, two, one. Wow. Look at that. You really wouldn't want that to be the hull of the boat you're travelling on. And what happened was that, that multi-year ice is a tougher, harder material can see the difference it makes to steel there, and that poses a significant problem for ice-breaking holes. Multi-year ice has a unique electromagnetic signature that shows up on satellite images, so the crew can steer a safe course around it. And their radar detects gaps in the ice, so they can find the quickest path to the terminal. On an icebreaker, a straight course isn't always the best. As the ice around the ship is constantly moving, the crew has to adjust its tactics all the time. And near the oil terminal, the ice is especially violent. Varande in this position, uh, 20 miles from Varande is a uh, heavy adverse ice condition. And uh, this place is boundary by land. And all this ice will be pressed in this small place. At six in the morning, Varanday oil terminal finally comes into sight on the horizon. It's part of a huge operation and a technological marvel in itself. Storage tanks on shore hold 320,000 tons of oil harvested from the oil field. The sea around Varande is so shallow that big tankers can't come in to dock. So the Russians pump the oil 20 kilometers through a pipeline to a gigantic filling station in the middle of the ice. The 
Yushchenko is on schedule to dock at the station, but the ice is extremely thick and in constant motion. Strong currents and wind are pushing the ice sheet across the water at four kilometers per hour. Two smaller icebreakers constantly circle the Guzhenko, trying to smash up the ice sheet before it hits the tanker. The captain starts the docking maneuver. He nudges the ship to within a few meters of the terminal so the crew can connect the pipeline. The pipeline head costs a million dollars, so they treat it with extreme care. As tons of crude oil begin to flow through the pipeline, all eyes are on the captain. He now has to do the most challenging job of the voyage. The ice is constantly pushing on the Guzhenko. The captain must use the azipods to keep the ship locked in place. If he misjudges the speed of the ice, could be game over. You must to do your work uh, from the start to the end without interruption. In uh, such difficult condition, as usual, I am keeping uh, the ship under my command. Captain Andreev must keep an eye on the tension in the mooring line. If it's too tight, it could snap and rip off the oil pipe. Too slack, and the ship could crash into the terminal. All the time, the captain has to adjust the speed and angle of the azipods to keep the ship in the same spot. These are the most challenging ice conditions his ship has ever faced. Eventually, the pressure of the ice becomes so violent that Captain Andreev orders the pipeline to be disconnected. The Timofey Guzhenko backs away to safer waters. It's 90 tons short of the 70,000 tons of oil it's supposed to collect. But now it's too dangerous to go back for more. Laden with its precious cargo, the Guzhenko embarks on the 1,000-kilometer return voyage to Murmansk through the heaviest ice of the season. But if any ship can make it, it's this one. Ice-breaking tanker Timofey Guzhenko is the undisputed champion of these waters and will be until someone builds an even bigger one.